Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Gianquilo's lectures. Today's lecture is about different study data in biostatistic. The purpose from study data is to analyze the result from different studies. For example, if we have a new medication approval study, this study goes into different phases. And through each phase, the results are analyzed through study data. And depending on the type of the study, different study data are used. There are different types of study data. The first type is called continuous data. So type number one is continuous data. And these data, they increase or decrease by the same amount. So what do I mean they increase and decrease by the same amount? So let's take an example to have a better understanding what this means. So let's say I have two patients. So example number one Patient number one and patient number two. P is for the patient. So patient number one walks 100 steps. And patient number two walks 200 steps. So here, clearly, we can see that patient number two has walked as twice as much patient number one, which is has increased by the same amount, which is 100 steps. Let's take another example. So, example number two, we have patient number one and patient number two. Now these patient, number one and two, they went to a doctor's office because they were having pain. And doctor used the pain scale to ask them regarding their pain, how severe it is. So doctor asked patient number one, what is your pain from zero to 10? Patient number one says, it's two out of 10. And patient number two said, it's four out of 10. So here, I can, just because four is twice as much as two, I cannot say that patient number two has as twice as much pain in comparison to patient number one. Where in the first example, I can clearly say that patient number two has walked as twice as much patient number one, which is by 100 steps more. And that's what I mean in continuous data that they increase or decrease by the same amount. So in this case, only example number one will apply for continuous data. Continuous data has two types. So I'm gonna refer to, the, refer to them by A and B. The first type is basically called interval data and Type B, it's called ratio data. So what's the difference between interval data and ratio data? Interval data, basically, zero does not equal none. Where in ratio data, it's the opposite. Zero equal none. So what do I mean by that? So let's take also some examples to have a better understanding. So for interval data, this is something like temperature. So if, if we have a temperature of zero Celsius, 
Zero Celsius, basically, it's zero, but it doesn't mean there is no temperature. And that's what I mean by zero does not equal none. And for ratio data, it does zero equal none. So let's take another example. Let's say you have a bag that has four oranges and you give these four oranges to your kids or friends or somebody. Now the bag has zero oranges. And this is where zero equal none because there, is, there are none oranges in the bag. So this is basically the difference in between interval data and ratio data. So this is continuous data. Now let's move into the second type of study data. And that is, so type number two. This is called discrete or categorical data. And same thing as continuous data, this one has two types as well. So, type A and type B. So type A, it's called nominal. So this is nominal data. Type B, it's called ordinal data. So what's the difference between them? Nominal data, basically, it's something like and these are, the reason they're called discrete or categorical, it's because they're categories. These data, they're basically categories. So for type A or letter A, nominal data, we have, for example, like names, categories of names, or we could have something like gender, or questions that listed in category and the answer is yes or no. These discrete or categorical data, when it comes into the nominal one, these ones, the order doesn't matter with them. So, they're basically not in order. So the categories, these ones, they do not come in order. What I mean is that the order doesn't matter. So if you place question yes and no, if you have a form that has categories, and if you place the question yes and no early on the page, later it comes in gender and then the names, it doesn't really make any difference. Or if you place them the other way around, name, gender, then the question yes or no, it doesn't give any difference. Where in ordinal, which actually the word ordinal comes from order. This comes from the word order. So this category in this ordinal data, they have to be in order. For example, if we have category low, category medium, or high. So these three categories, they come in order from low to high or high to low. So the order here does matter. And this is the difference between ordinal data versus nominal data. These ones, the order doesn't matter. 
where in ordinal data, the order actually does matter. And the easiest way so you can keep it in your mind, the ordinal, the word ordinal comes from order. And for ordinal data, these data, something to keep in mind, so they do not increase or decrease by the same amount, which is opposite to where we what we saw in continuous data. They do increase or decrease by the same amount. So here, basically, example number two would apply because they did increase. So for example, let's take another example here. Let's say, actually I'm just gonna stick with the red. Let's say we have patient number one, patient number two, and patient number three. And we're still doing pain scale. So patient number one says, I have pain two out of 10. Patient number two says four out of 10. And three says eight out of 10. So just because four is twice as much as two, it doesn't mean this patient number two has twice as much pain comparison to patient number one. And the same is true for patient number three. 8 is twice as much as 4, but doesn't mean this person have twice as much pain in comparison to patient number 2. Someone else could say, I have 7, or maybe 9, or maybe 6. So this is why they do not increase or decrease by the same amount. And this is exactly the opposite to continuous data. So now let's move into two different examples to further understand the study data. So example number one says, during the last 10 months, have you had cold? So looking at this question, if we were to look at these different types of study data, which one would be applying to this question? So this question obviously is asking a yes or no. Did you have it or not? So this would be nominal data. Question yes and no. So this would be nominal data. Example number two says, how would you rate your car? Is it excellent, good, fair, or poor? Looking at these, now these are going from low to high, even though they are increasing, but they're not increasing by the same amount. Because what may seem good to somebody, it may seem fair or maybe even excellent to someone else. So this example is actually ordinal data because it does go from low to high or high to low, but they do not increase or decrease by the same amount in comparison to what we saw in continuous data. So this is going to be ordinal data. And this is it for this video. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.